Who is it that overcomes the world? Live from the studios of the Ram Cave in the home of the camellias, I'm Joe Tarosian, and this is the Burbank Faith Virtual Good Morning for August the 25th, 2023. Uh, as always, we are praying for our young people. Today, we're going to be in 1 John 5.5. 5. Uh, that's 1 John 5.5. 5. It is episode number 118 of A Ministry Without Parole. And uh, we are happy to be here today. Sorry, I I was ready to go on an hour ago. Things came up. and uh, But hey, that's just life, right? Stuff comes up. So we're going to get this pumped out, get this out to you, get some prayer requests in, and then let you go on your way. Again, thank you for everyone that clicks on, everyone that is encouraging us, everyone uh, blessing us with uh, financial support. We appreciate that, and of course we welcome it, but not at the expense of your church. If you've got a church that you attend, if if we are your spiritual nourishment, then please, by all means, and and we do appreciate that. But um, uh, that that is between you and the Lord. So First John chapter one verses five through five. Okay, this is John one verse. Uh, who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Say it one more time. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. 1 John 5, 5. What's the application here? I think the application is overwhelmingly simple. Alcohol, drugs, addictions, personal failures, family failures, financial failures, emotional pain, scars, hurts, hopelessness, despair, disease, dysfunction, and or rampant apostasy in the church. Who is it that overcomes all these things? Who is it that overcomes the world? And uh, the scripture answers that. When I was 18, back in 1980 something, I read 10 Days That Shook the World. It was by John Reed. He was a communist journalist and he covered uh, the Russian Revolution in terms of when the Bolsheviks took over. And it was a fantastic read. I mean, for almost being a at that time, it was a 60 years old. Now it's almost 100 years old. Um, it was an amazing read. And for about 36 hours, I thought I might have been a communist. I thought, man, there's some answers here. There's some there's some things here that are good. There's some things that are, this needs to, maybe this could work. Kelly McCoy, thank you so much, Kelly, for your encouragement. But when the emotion passed, reason returned. And I realized that it was just another system elevating the supposed goodness of man. And apart from God, there is no goodness, right? Note to church, apart from Christ, there is no transcendent goodness in man. I know that goes against living your best life. That goes against every new age philosophy. Um, no, apart from Christ, there is no transcendent goodness in man. You'll find and experience good deeds and mostly good intentions, but you will not find eternal, everlasting goodness in man. Can't do it. You can even build a UN building. You can't find it. Nor will you find the wisdom to avoid all the things in this world that take us down, right? Or the wisdom to set things right. Sometimes we double down on evil. Sometimes we double down on stupid. And more often than not, we are only plain ignorant of the truth. The Apostle John lays it out for us in the first century. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. Um, uh, a modern telling of that might come from Robert Frost. I shall be telling this with a sigh somewhere ages and ages hence. Two roads, sound familiar, diverged in a wood, and I took the one less traveled by. And that has made all the difference. Now, of course, Frost wasn't speaking about following Christ, but John is. The less traveled road is the one that goes with Christ. And in a world that can't fix or mend anything, it is Christ who we say with a sigh for ages and ages to come, it is Christ that has made all the difference. The only thing that has been permanent and transcendent in my life has been Christ. For many of you watching this, you realize the only thing that has been permanent and transcendent and ultimately truthful, ultimately good, has been Christ. And we don't want to chain or be chained to a common road, the world's road with its, with its ideas and, and its philosophies, right? 
Um, we don't want to be chained to the world's road that takes us to places we've already seen and lands us in the same spot over and over and over again, right? We always come back because we found no answer. And then when you think about that, think about our young people. They are literally being conditioned on our campuses via curriculum into believing the world has answers, ultimate transcendent answers. Yeah, you can get two plus two equals four, at least that you used to. But ultimate transcendent answers about life? We don't want our young people enslaved by the world's philosophies regarding love, victory, and happiness and peace. They are antithetical to what Christ would have for us. We don't want our young people beguiled by smooth, flattering words or cool, round, pear-shaped tones into believing that the answers in life are found apart from Christ. It's amazing when we're in churches and the pastors close their Bible and quote some great philosopher or an early church father. Hey, I like the early church fathers too, but they don't replace the word of God, right? Or in our wisdom, we say we're just going to stick to the red letters and ignore the writings of Paul. It doesn't work that way. And uh, the answers are found in Christ. We don't want our people growing or our young people growing in the, we want them actually, growing in the confidence that the Lord is ever present. That's what we want them to know, that they grow in the confidence that the Lord is ever present and has a path and a plan for their lives. To cling tenaciously to that path with a grit that allows them to keep walking with him and if need be, to keep walking alone with him without friends around them. To develop the ability, as I've shared many times, not by emotion, but by knowledge, to trust in the authority of Scripture, of all Scripture, and to avoid all conformity with the sensibilities and hopelessness of our present culture into trusting these false truths that are being foisted upon us, even in our pulpits, even in our so-called uh, Christian culture. These false truths are being advanced, a dependency on something other than Christ, answers found outside of Christ. And when we keep our focus on Christ, when we recognize who is it that overcomes the world, only he who believes in Jesus Christ, who follows Christ, who's a loyal believer, believing uh, follower of Christ, it is that person who can remain optimistic about the future because they realize it is Christ that overcomes the world, not some sweep of a political party in an election. Right, And so when we know that it is Christ that overcomes the world, when we are face to face, or better yet, our young people are face to face, and they understand that it is Christ that overcomes the world, and they are face to face with the spiritual hostility of this world, they will be alert, unmovable, unshakable, and undefeated in him, and absolutely terrifying to those opposing Christ in the spiritual realm. Looking alone to Jesus, living in his strength, they will always be victorious. And that's why we pray for our young people. We want them to know who is it that overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the son of God, not the flowery words of your professor, not the flowery words of your pastor, not the flowery words of some psychologist, therapist, teacher, friend. It is only Christ that enables us to overcome the things we see in this world and allows us to remain hopeful for the future. And that is why we pray for our young people. Walter Garcia, pastor, good to have you with us. Dee Dee, thank you so much for clicking on. So I wanted to get that out there. We are gonna pray for our young people today. We're gonna to lift them up in prayer and those who have influence on them, <coughs> preachers, teachers, athletes, entertainers, uh, soldiers, police officers, politicians, they carry so much influence. And for those of us that are in those positions, uh, we have to recognize that doing what's best for us is not necessarily doing what's best uh, for those young people. Doing what's best for us might not be best for the kingdom of God. The calling when you're in a position where you have influence is a little greater than your next paycheck. And yeah, it's really tough, but it's something we always have to consider. And if we're gonna call ourselves people with a believing loyalty in Christ, then sometimes we have to take the road less traveled. And that road less traveled might be a little harder, but that road less traveled is the right road to go in order to model Christ for our young people. So we're going to pray for our young people. We're going to pray for those who have influence on them, especially those on campuses 
and in other places, okay? Um, also, going to give some other requests that come in here. An unspoken came in from Vivian Huerta, one of our key people at Burbank Faith Virtual. Um, she had a friend who had critical surgery yesterday. We're waiting for an update on that. Bill Alajaji, who you've all probably received some kind of encouraging word from, uh, basically, essentially a lay pastor with us at Burbank Faith Virtual. He goes in for testing next Wednesday regarding some of the anxiety issue and issues and how it's been affecting his heart this summer. You know, he's had a few episodes. Uh, so be in prayer for him through the weekend and next Wednesday, and we'll give you updates. As always, we're going to continue to pray for Maui. Uh, we're going to pray for those battling diabetes, Victor Storms, Ronnie Maldonado, Jeff Keith. We're going to continue to pray for the Stidham Rodriguez family at the passing of their mom, Donnie. Tim Smith in Pennsylvania. Uh, Brian, he's the young man that had a brain injury several years ago and it's really affecting his family life. We're praying for Heather, a young lady that needs salvation and she's close, we're praying for her. We're praying for Hector, he's a man battling mental illness. He is getting help, but we need to pray for him and his family. Rafi, our young boy in the neighborhood, uh, continue to pray for him. Holly Randolph, who's basically learning to walk again. She is the sister of Julie Randolph in our Ridgecrest Church. Corey and Christy in Northern California as they, they move forward and, and recover from the, the passing of their son, Seth. I don't know if you truly recover, but you do move forward. And so we pray for Corey and Christy. John Strickland in North Carolina. Frank Griffin in Arizona. Richard Stewart in Las Vegas. Mark and Debbie Lehman as they're traveling cross-country right now from Oklahoma, our new district superintendents. Lord, we also pray for uh, Jan, our 87-year-old Marine. Uh, Piper Morris and her son Grayson up in Idaho. He battles crab uh, crab's disease. We're praying for him. Darlene Carroll, great friend in the in in Washington State. Pray for her friend Thea and the relationships we, with her family that has been uh, highly contentious. We pray for them. We pray for Kathy Duncan who has ongoing health issues. We continue to pray for the Lynch family, and especially John, as his condition has not improved. We pray for those battling cancer: Kirk McDonald, Dion Nizzi, Rachel Gilbert, Enrique Romo, Colby Van Dyke. Emmanuel and Tim Burns. Uh, also, we pray for Vision Paradise, Pastor Walter, Pastor Francis, Edgar, and the whole Vision Paradise ministry. We ask uh, for your prayers. And Walter Garcia, who's just commented here, uh, he is uh, one of those who is we are praying for. He is Pastor Walter. We also pray for Burbank Faith and that our like-mindedness in Christ would grow with Vision Paradise and a future Armenian ministry. And be in prayer for us at Burbank Faith as uh, we... Um, we want to have great Sundays. We don't want to have just an idea to the future, but we want to look to the immediate future. And we pray that this Sunday, the message, as we talk about Hezekiah, uh, the worship and, and all that takes place, that we want to be glorifying to God. Um, so we, we, we pray uh, right now uh, for, for Burbank faith. We also pray for Granite Ridge Home Camp and uh, everything they are going through as they get ready for family camp in another week or so. We pray for them that it is a blessed time. Uh, so cool, we got that stuff out. Uh, let us pray and uh, we will get you folks on your way. Okay, Lord, we pray for our young people today, Lord. We pray that you are on the campuses with them today, Lord, that you are going for them, Lord, clearing the path spiritually, that, Lord, you would remove those who speak evil, those who would speak words antithetical to the to the truth that you want us to have and know and understand, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray for our young people. We take away those voices, Lord. Cause them to think about themselves and what they're thinking, Lord, and bring shame, uh, Lord, to them. If they're thinking, speaking something contrary to your word, work in their lives, Lord. Lord, protect our young people, God. Go to war for them, Lord, as we go to war in our realm, go to war in, in the spiritual realms, Lord. Lord, we also ask for those that have influence over our young people. We pray for <clears throat> the teachers, the preachers, the police officers, the soldiers, the athletes, the entertainers, the politicians, <clears throat> those who have influence, God, that we would all look at ourselves soberly and understand that sometimes we are in position, Lord, where we need to do what is right, and what is right might not be best for us in the moment, Lord. Give us courage and the grit to go forward in the truth that is you, Lord. Uh, Lord, we pray for, for the ongoing stuff that's taking place in Maui, Lord. We pray for our Vivian Huerta's friend who had surgery yesterday. We pray for our brother Bill Alajaji as he gets ready for tests next Wednesday, Lord. Uh, uh, we pray for good answers there. Those battling diabetes, Victor, Ronnie, Jeff. We pray for the Sidham Rodriguez family, Tim Smith, Brian, Heather, Hector, Rafi, uh, Holly Randolph, Corey and Christie, 
John Strickland in North Carolina, Frank Griffin in Arizona, Richard Stewart, the grandfather of Shea Stewart, who's in comfort care in Las Vegas. Pray for the laymans as they travel cross country. Pray for Jan, our 87-year-old Marine. Lord, we ask for Piper Morris and her son Grayson. We ask for Darlene Carroll's friends Thea and Kathy Duncan. Pray for the Lynch household and all that they're going through, Lord. And we pray for those battling cancer, Kirk, Dion, Rachel, Enrique, Colby, and Emmanuel, and Tim Burns, Lord. We pray, Lord, that we wouldn't just repeat their names, but that we would recognize that each one of these individuals that we've already mentioned, Lord, they are having a battle. They have things going on in their lives. There are pains. And uh, in that battle, Lord, they get weak and they get fatigued and, and the enemy comes, Lord. Protect them spiritually as well as emotionally, Lord. Let us recognize the battle these folks are in. Lord, we pray for Vision Paradise. We pray for Burbank Faith and our relationship and the relationship that we'll all have with the future Armenian ministry, Lord. We ask for your blessings in that situation, Lord. And we pray for Burbank Faith itself, Lord, our leadership, our board. Um, and we pray for this Sunday that it's not just uh, okay, but that it's spectacular, not just ordinary, but extraordinary. Lord, uh, bless us um, as we get ready for an extraordinary weekend, Lord. And we pray for Granite Ridge Home Camp, Lord, that you keep it safe, that you keep it blessed, and that, Lord, you just bless that staff, Lord, and let them know that they are representatives of your kingdom, God, and let them live in that strength, Lord, from top to bottom, as board members all the way down to, to people who work in the kitchen, Lord. Uh, that they are representatives of you who can bring change and uh, testimony to the lives of others. Lord, we again thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, 16 minutes and 30 seconds. That's not too bad. All right, uh, I'm going to let you go. We're going to spread this all over social media. Be sure to hit like, uh, you know, and, uh, and, and follow us in different places. On YouTube, our YouTube channel, make sure you hit like and subscribe there. We're going to get this on Instagram, you know, Twitter, all those places, Burbank Virtual, our website, and uh, continue to pray for these folks as uh, we head into the weekend. Also, um, if, uh, if you are joining us in person on Sunday, it would be a good job to go back and listen to my message last Sunday. I'm not repeating it this Sunday. I'm actually preaching the next, it's like part two of the Hezekiah story. So uh, just giving you fair warning on that you want to be caught up. Uh, I don't know if it's absolutely necessary, but it might help you. Okay. God bless. Take care. And uh, we will see you soon.